and welcome to Serpente Sunday for Sunday, October 24th, 2021. I am Lori with Behavior Education at Spirit Keeper Equine Sanctuary. And on this Serpente Sunday, I'm going to give you a medical update about our carpet python, Rosalie, who had surgery in September to rectify a congenital defect that she was born with. If you haven't already seen that video, make sure you check it out. But she was born with the great vessel that leaves her heart um, wrapped around her esophagus. And as she got older, she began to not be able to swallow anymore because her esophagus was getting constricted by the great vessel from the heart. That was something she was born with. It was something that had to be corrected by surgery. The veterinarian had to sever the esophagus, untwine it from the great vessel, and then sew it back together. Well, unfortunately, when her esophagus healed, it healed flat like a pancake and it adhered to itself. So there was no opening for any food or liquid to pass through. Now the esophageal muscle is a smooth muscle tissue. It's different from the striated muscle tissue that would be in your thigh muscle or your bicep muscle, for example. It heals very quickly. And unfortunately, when her esophagus healed, where it was sewn back together, it just healed shut. And so she had to go in just over a week ago for a second surgery. The veterinarian had to open up her esophagus back up and clean out the scar tissue. And in order to prevent the same thing from happening again, Dr. Pfaff from Critter Care Animal Hospital tried something that to the best of our knowledge has never been done before. She took a Foley catheter, which is a urinary catheter. And she inserted it into Rosalie's esophagus. And then she sutured it at the bottom. And then she cut a small slit in Rosalie's neck just behind the head so that the anterior portion of the catheter, the opening would stick out of the neck and she sewed the esophagus shut again. And for a week, she left that catheter in and that was actually advantageous because it kept the esophagus open and she was able to administer nutrients and water to Rosalie in the form of critical care carnivore diet. with diet specifically formulated for critical care for obligate carnivores. So she was able to get nutrition through the um, catheter that was inserted into the esophagus. And the hope is that when the catheter is pulled out, the esophagus will remain open because it will have healed around the catheter. So after a week, um, Rosalie spent a week with Dr. Pfaff. Dr. Pfaff actually took Rosalie home with her to care for her and she took the catheter out after a week. It came out fairly easily. And then Rosalie was able to come home last Saturday. So a week ago today, Rosalie came home and I have fed her twice, two very, very, very small meals. And we are hoping that her esophagus has remained open and that she's able to pass food through it. So the first meal was kind of mush. I cut a fuzzy in half. And of course, when that thawed, it became must, mushy and the insides were kind of coming out. And um, it was more or less mush that she swallowed by the time she got it in her mouth. But the second meal was yesterday and it was a small fuzzy mouse and she ate it whole. And it was a little bit of a struggle getting it down and getting it past the surgery spot. I was quite anxious about that and a little bit concerned while I was watching her do that. But it seems that today, we're 24 hours later, that it did pass through that area. We've had no regurgitation. And so fingers crossed that this worked because to the best of my knowledge, to the best of Dr. Fast's knowledge, this is a totally experimental procedure. Rosalie is on antibiotic injections. She's on ceftazidime. And I just gave her one tonight. So I got a few seconds of video of that and a few seconds of video of her while she was out so that you could take a look at her. She's not happy because she's been undergoing this struggle for this condition all year. And she's had two surgeries now and a couple of hospital stays and she's had 
numerous antibiotic injections and she's going to have to have 14 more and so you can bet that she isn't happy no matter how much training she's had and she is target trained so she actually remembered her target training and we had a really good session when she ate her meal last night but despite all of that she's just not happy because we keep having to give her injections we keep having to take her out for examinations and you know she's just not happy but hopefully we get her through this ordeal and she recovers and she's able to eat and she's only three years old so she could potentially live 20 to 30 years and hopefully we get this behind her and she has an excellent rest of her life here with us thing that happened is our children's python Marcel was attacked by cats just over a week ago. He escaped from the black box cages enclosure that we put him in. Now that is no fault of black box cages enclosures. That is my fault. I thought the vents, the routed vents in the back were too small for him to get through and so I didn't cover them. What I have done for baby corn snakes is cover those routed vent slits with window screen material so they can't get out or I've asked the cage manufacturer to make those um, smaller less wide than is standard but this cage just came standard and I didn't do anything to prevent an escape so he escaped from that and rather than cover it with screen material I had a fatter snake <laughs> I have a baby Royal Python, Python Regis, that's a few months old that I put in there instead and she cannot fit through the vent slats, slits. So I put my cell back in his old enclosure, but I had already started to clean it and I didn't pop the top screen down all the way. It, I thought it was secured and one corner was not all the way secured. It wasn't all the way loose, but it was loose enough that he was able to push out and flatten himself and squeeze out and I didn't realize that he escaped and I went to actually do our my final check for the morning which was four or five in the morning of our one of our cat rooms because we keep the cats separated from the snakes they're in their own room the door is shut and I saw a snake upside down and balled up and laying in the floor and my you know my heart just sunk my stomach got knots in it it was my cell and he had gotten out of his enclosure, which is at the top of a stack. He had climbed down the activity station, obviously, and gotten onto the floor. He left his room, he went down the hall. He went um, behind a baby gate that we have across the cat room door that has a bar at the bottom. So it means he had to climb over that bar and then under the door to get into the cat room. And he got into a room with three cats and they got a hold of him. And I thought he was dead because when I picked him up, he wasn't moving. He had puncture wounds all up and down his body, except for his head and his tail. The end of his tail looked pretty bad. So I, I turned him over. I, I spread him out. Uh, he still wasn't moving. I thought for sure that he was dead. 
but he tongue flicked after a few minutes. And so I warmed him up. I soaked him in some very dilute chlorhexidine. You can also soak injuries like that, puncture wounds in dilute betadine solution, but the chlorhexidine was handy. It was like right there. So I grabbed it right away because I was really worried about if everything else was okay, infection from the cat bites because cat bites carry a lot of bacteria. I've gotten infections from cat bites and so I wanted to soak him right away and I started him on antibiotics right away that the the veterinarian has us keep here at the facility and I got him into the hospital and miraculously, miraculously he didn't have any fractures or internal injuries just all of these puncture wounds so he stayed at the veterinarian for a week and he was getting daily soaks in dilute betadine solution. And then he did have to have surgery to have the tip of his tail amputated. It became black and necrotic within not even 48 hours after the attack happened. So there was just, it was just too mauled and there was just no circulation or healthy tissue there. So Dr. Pfaff amputated just the tip of his tail and thankfully, Thankfully for Marcel, that was posterior to the cloaca, and he's already used the bathroom. He has um, produced feces, and he's produced urates, and he's doing well, and he came home today. So I have a little bit of video of me bringing him home. Well, I am just back from the vet, picking up our Antresia children, I'm Marcel. It's Saturday, October 23rd. 2021 and Marcel has been at the vet since last Saturday because he escaped from two different enclosures and got out of his room and went down the hall into the cat room which we keep that door secured and closed and he got attacked by the cats and so he has spent this past week at the hospital um, for treatment and he had to have the end of his tail amputated. So I'm just getting home with him and with our mail, which I think this might be something from, it's something from Canova Reptiles. So we'll have to um, check on Marcel and I will unbox this. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's set Marcel down. The vet said that he really seemed to enjoy his soaks. He, part of his treatment was daily warm baths in um, betadine, dilute betadine solution. And that he really seemed to like that. So here he is. And you can, I don't know if you can see, he has bite wounds. Luckily not on his head, but all up and down his body, except for his head. Here is his other side. There's a, the cats, three cats just gnawed on him pretty badly. And so he's just covered in puncture wounds. Thankfully, he doesn't have any fractures or internal injuries, but the tip of his tail, um, blood, it was just mauled and blood was cut off to it and it became necrotic, which means the tissue died and the circulation was cut off. He had to have the end of his tail amputated and lucky for him, all those injuries were posterior to the cloaca, so it doesn't affect him using the bathroom or anything like that and he's already passed urates and stool. So he's doing really, really well. He has to go back in three weeks to have a recheck and have suture removal. And of course he's on antibiotics and he's getting injections every other day. Clearly he's feeling better because when I was giving him injections initially, he was pretty sedate about that and wasn't really moving much. And now he's not having it. He is not happy at all total escape and avoidance behavior. So this is gonna be really fun because he has to have 13 more antibiotic injections. It's just something we have to do. Um, he has to have them.
Well, everybody, thank you so much for watching and for your continued interest in snake training and behavior and in what's going on here at our animal sanctuary. It has not been an easy few months. Since August, we have lost six animals here and it's not completely unexpected. We're an animal sanctuary, so animals come here and we rarely, rarely adopt them out. They usually come here as a last stop. So we do a lot of palliative care, a lot of end of life care. And um, since the end of August, we lost two elderly horses. One was 28 and one was 32. We lost a cat to cancer. We lost Sifra, one of our Brattles pythons, to a congenital heart defect that she was born with. She died of a sudden aortic heart aneurysm. And then we lost two potbelly pigs within a week of each other, Cordelia and Lucy. Cordelia was 19 years old and Lucy was 18 years old. So it's been tough. And then having this ordeal going on with Rosalie and then this happen with Marcel has not been easy. But we are dealing with it and I'm just happy that both of those snakes so far, fingers crossed, are doing well. So keep them in your thoughts. I will update you when anything changes and if I don't give you an update, just assume everything is status quo. And until next time, everybody please remember to always be kind and love your animals. <laughs>